Here we have our old aluminum sink, old faucet and sprayer. I'm going to be replacing all of it. First thing you need to do whenever you're messing with plumbing is turn off the water. I'm also going to take off the doors, just to allow easier access in and out. Alright, so these knobs will probably be a little stuck if they've been here for 10, 20, however many years. They're just going to have a little bit of corrosion in there. So if you just lightly tap them, it can work the knobs loose and it'll easily turn. It turns to the right to turn all the way off. We have the hot and cold and then the one down here in the bottom you see is for the dishwasher. Make sure you have a towel down uh, so you don't get water all over the bottom of your cabinet. Then check make sure it is turned off and that you don't have any drips. I think we're good here. Then you continue to take off the supply lines which is right here and right there. Next I'll be unattaching the drainage from the dishwasher and the plumbing up from the P-trap. Alright, next I have to undo these clips as you see them here, there, there's one back there, one there, one there, and looks like two right there. Those just, uh, those just unscrew and it loosens up the, the sink from the countertop. So you have to unscrew them and then turn them uh, parallel with the sink in order to unlock them so they won't get caught by the countertop whenever you try to lift up the sink. This is what it looks like when it's done. Alright, so we've turned off the water. we detached the water lines, the dishwasher drainage, and also the P-trap. We have untightened the clips, and now it's ready to take out the sink. So using a utility knife and just prying it loose probably isn't the best way to do it. I pulled up some of the laminate here um, in a few places actually and then chipped it a little bit right here. Uh, if you know a better way of getting up the sink, put it down in the comments so other people getting ready to do this task will know and also it'll help me out for in the future. Um, pulling up, I also pulled a little bit of the particle board apart right here. Um, so any helpful hints will be appreciated. Also you can see the footprint of the the sink is not very big so what I did is I added some supports on either side here to help hold the weight because this the sink is cast iron so it's going to be a little heavier than the aluminum so definitely these supports I think are necessary especially given the the width that it's actually holding on to. Um, I'm going to clean up around the area here and I'm going to put some silicone around the edges to help make that waterproof and I think it's easier to do it now rather than when it's set here because it's so heavy it'll be hard to get behind especially right there. Alright here's a look at the sink. I got it off Craigslist. It is a Kohler cast iron and this is the faucet that I'm also going to be putting in. Uh, also, Craigslist special. Um, most faucets go in the same. They'll have this threaded area here uh, that goes into the hole. And then this comes, this is uh, the nut that goes up through the bottom. So it screws on right here and just tightens up this bolt right here. You'll have a washer to go on there so it won't be scratching up the finish. Um, this particular faucet that I got did not come with this uh, plate so I 
got it off Amazon. And it also comes with uh, the washer and the nuts and everything to put on. So let's do that. All right, so the way that you put on this plate, first you get the, it comes with a little screw here, and you slide it in, one on each side, just like that. And then a washer for each side. And then you go put it in this position, and then you have these little nuts that slide onto the back. This is what it looks like from the back side, screwed in. This is just holding it in place, this little plastic piece on both sides, so leaving this the only hole for the faucet. I think I'll go ahead and put the sink in first, because this faucet's kind of heavy and I don't want it to put a bunch of weight on here and maybe crack this finish or what. And plus there's, looks like there's an easy access underneath, so I won't have far to reach. So that's what I'll do. It's not sitting exactly how I like it. It's There's quite a big gap there. I don't like how it's sitting, but I think mostly because this the whole opening was just made it was just made too big for the previous sink and now this sink's not sitting in there correctly either. I think I'll just you know, put a big bead of silicone right there to help cover that up. You know, there's nothing I can do to to make that hole smaller or to to really clamp it down because it, you know, it's cast iron, so it's it's not going to have the clamps like the aluminum will. So just cover up the hole as best I can. Next, we'll put in the faucet. All right, so here it is. This already has a little gasket right here, so it's going to be okay just to sit there, feed these through. The faucet is now secured. I had to get some extensions for the lines because they were obviously too short for the area. Now it's time to work on some of this plumbing. Having a look at our plumbing situation. We have a vegetable sink on this side and then like a deeper sink on this side, so they're not level. Normal kits assume the sinks are level, um, so I have to do something different. A normal kit would be like this, you know, one drain be here and another drain be parallel. But since I'm doing a reverse osmosis, it also needs a drain, so I'll be putting that up top and help uh, make up the difference between the two sinks. If you get a kit, or you know, when you're doing this, you'll need two kinds of washers. Um, one kind of looks like a top hat. It's flat on one side, 
and then points out on the other side. And then this one, it's also flat on one side and points out on this side, but it's it's continuous. It's like a triangle in a continuous circle. These are the two different kinds. How they're used is the top hat one, this one right here. It goes in upside down like this. So whenever you have a fitting, it compresses against this ring and makes a watertight seal. On the other one, you have to put in your nut first, and then you have to put in the next one, the pointy side towards the end. So this causes it to stop. It won't continue. And then you are able to fit this inside, and then you screw them together, and that's what makes your watertight seal. Alright, so here's a look of what I've done so far. I uh, went ahead and connected these, these, and then I had this, put this in for the reverse osmosis that it fills that gap in between the two sinks. I got my drainage for my dishwasher and my P-trap. I'm actually going to replace it with this one just so I can, you know, get that little extra length right there to cover this space. And plus this little flexible part will help it be a little easier to line up. Alright, so all the plumbing is done. I got my P-trap installed. I'll have to get a new uh, connector for the dishwasher discharge as it doesn't fit very well on this end. Um, at this point I'm going to go put in the water system that I have. Uh, I'll put a link into that video in the description. Uh, check, that out if you're, check that out if you're interested. Alright, so here it is. New faucet sink. I turned the water on. The system is purging, so that's what you probably hear. Uh, no immediate leaks. I do have a drip right there, it looks like. Um, but I do not have a hookup for the dishwasher yet, so when I run it, it does drip into this from right here. So I'll have to get something for that. Other than that, I believe I'm done. Music